Hello. As you probably know, you can animate values by connecting them to the input, and then you can find them on the Bifrost node in the outliner. You can find them in the channel box. So I could just animate this value like I could animate any other value in Maya. But I don't want to do this. I want to come up with a way to be able to do this inside the graph. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a compound. I'm going to call it animate value. And for now, I just want to create the inputs. So I want four float inputs. Like this. I can delete it. I'm just going to rename them so it's start value, end value, start frame, and end frame. And I want to use those to control the animation. But I also want to use an F curve to. Um, control how things are interpolated. Okay. So essentially what I want to do is I want to use this F curve and I want to sample, let's say I have 10 frames of animation to find here with the start and end frames. Then I want to sample this F curve at 10 positions equal, evenly spaced and then multiply it by the end value to stretch the curve out, just like a regular uh, animation curve in the graph editor. And, uh, well, I hope that makes sense, but I'm going to show it by doing it. So first of all, I create a time node, and I take the frame, the current frame, and I subtract from it the start frame. And then I want to divide this by the actual animation duration. And the duration is just the end frame minus the start frame. So if I divide this by the duration, I should have values between 0 and 1, or negative values. That's OK. And I can sample this, or I could plug this into the F curve here. And now, if I multiply the outcoming value by the end value, and I plug this into the output, let's rename this to out value. I should have an animated value based on these inputs and the F curve. So let's say 0 to 10 from frame 1 to 11. And since it's linear, so we should see, and this is an animation of 10 frames, so every frame this should be increasing by one unit. Well, let's test if this is actually true. Uh, I'm going to create a vector. I want to move this in X. I'm just going to add this to the current point position. So now, if I hit play, we can see indeed it's moving one unit per frame in the x direction. And I can control this just like with an atom curve by changing the you know, shape of the curve. Cool. Now, there's one problem that if I change the start value, I would expect it to move over in that direction, but it's currently not. So I want to change this. Come in here, make a small tweak. I can use the change range node. By the way, if all of this is a little bit unclear to you, I've made a video on both the F curve and this change range node. So I'm going to put a link in the description and uh, you can watch that. So here, I want to, oh, 
I also want to move these two values onto a new input node to make it a little more easy to read. I'll do that first. Move this over here, as well as this. And um, I'm going to plug this here, this here, and this here. And now we can see it moved, and this is working now too. It's starting at uh, 5, and it's going up to 10. Cool. There's one other thing that's not working, and that is, let's say I want to go from a higher value to a zero value. If I do this, I can see nothing's happening here. And I think that is because by putting a zero in here, the vet, you know, the range is go is going to be from zero to zero, which I think this node doesn't know what to do with. So if I change this to a smaller number, like a tiny number that's almost zero, then it should be working okay. And so I could just, you know not input zero here, but I can also try and solve this in here. So if I just check if this first is zero, mm, plug this in here, then I can just create a value node and make it really, really tiny. Something like this, and otherwise I'm just going to use this end value as is. So, here, and also here. Now I can see it's going from 10 to 0. Cool. Well, now I could just go ahead and publish this. I've already published this, so I'm not going to do it. But you could just publish this and uh, use it whenever you need it. And I want to talk about one other thing, because now I've just animated one basic, one simple object. But this becomes a lot more interesting when instead of having single values here you're using an array of values and you can do something that's more interesting um, so let me show this so here I've got a bunch of points they're not animated I've already prepared this so I just want to add again maybe I just want to move them up in Y let's say we start at 0 end at 10 Maybe start at frame 10, from 10 to 25. Uh, I can stick with the F curve for the moment. And if I plug it in, should see uh, those points moving up. But that's really boring because they're all moving together. And that's where the arrays come in because you can plug in arrays here for the start and end frame. And then we have a bit of an offset. So let's try and do that. So I want to create a sequence array. And the size should be the number of points. So I could just use an array size on these points use this for my size and as a start I use frame 10 
For now, I'm going to, uh, going to use a step size of 1. I'm going to do the same thing for the end frame. End frame was 25. And now, if I plug those into the start and end frame, what we should be able to see is that they're now uh, moving one, fr uh, one point after the other. Now this is a bit slow, or we have too many points, it takes too long, so what I could do, and I don't know why it creates it up here, I'm going to use the same step size for both. So what I could do is turn this into a much smaller number, let's say 0 0.05. And now we can see them moving a little more quickly. And maybe there's one other thing I wanted to show you that I could use this animated value I created, or these values, to also drive the color. So right now I've got this one random value array, but what if I created another one and I just change the colors to more bluish and maybe I want to lerp these. So I want to interpolate between these two colors, color arrays and I want to use the animated value as a fraction, but I need values between 0 and 1. And by the way, I'll change this to float. So I want values between 0 and 1. This is giving me values between 0 and 10. So let me change this from 0 to 10 to 0 to 1. Use this for my fraction. Plug it in here. And now we can see the colors also changing based on my animated values here. So this is a very basic example, but hopefully you can see that there's a lot you could do with this for animation, procedural animation inside the graph. And uh, thanks for watching.